morning. We're um, out this morning in the north end of uh, Queen Anne's County and we've come to a hidden treasure this morning. There's all these hidden treasures over the county that we really don't know about. So Jay and his wife Krista uh, Falstad invited us to come up and take a little bit of look of their farm and the niche that you have here. So Jay, if you want to give us a little bit of history about uh, what you do here and we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, this is Calico Fields Lavender Farm. Uh, in addition to the lavender, we also grow a couple other crops, but lavender is the, the dominating crop that we have. We've got 10 different varieties of lavender uh, in the field right now. We harvest it for a variety of purposes. Uh, some we harvest for um, culinary purposes. Others we dry um, and use in a wide variety of our products. And then um, other lavender we distill down for the oil and then also incorporate that into some of our products. Tell us why you really got into um, lavender and maybe what led you to, to come to lavender. Well, we started off with perennial plants and uh, that didn't work out like we had hoped. Uh, as I may have mentioned earlier, we don't use any chemicals at all okay. on this farm. So are and you so certified organic or are you just? We're not certified organic. But you can say natural. We're organic, uh, right. we're just not certified. Okay, okay. Um, but we tried perennials, that didn't work out. Um, we were looking okay. for an alternative that was um, interesting to us uh, personally and looking for something that maybe nobody else was doing. And um, we learned about lavender. There are other lavender farms out on the West Coast and certainly in Europe. And there's one down by the beach that we're aware mm -hmm. of. And so we wanted to try something a little different. And, uh, and so we came up with this. We started with 100 plants that was our, our first introduction. Uh, there were some people that said lavender wouldn't grow well here because of the humidity. Um, but we started with 100 and those first 100 seemed to grow pretty well and so we just we kept up with it. So do you have any trouble with disease because of the humidity or not? Or is it pretty resistant to disease? No, what, if you look out at the field what we've done is we've compensated for the humidity by um, making the rows a little wider. Spacing. Um, spacing the plants a little wider. So they'll get the air that moves. They get moves. the air circulation okay. and then on top of that we're in a section here in the field that gets full sun. And okay. lavender really likes three things. Uh, likes sandy, well-drained soil, okay. likes full sun, and likes a lot of good uh, air circulation. Right now we have um, 10 different varieties of lavender here on the farm. It's uh, divided into um, both French and English lavender. Okay. The English lavender is mostly used for culinary purposes um, because it doesn't have as much oil in it, and okay. so it, it can be used for uh, culinary. The French lavender has a lot more oil in it, and so okay. um, that we use for oil production and then drying. Okay. But look at all the bumblebees. I know. And what's interesting about that is look at, you'll see more bumblebees on this variety and more honeybees on this variety. So that's what There's a lot more know. nectar on this one. Okay. See, there's a dragonfly. Oh yeah, I just saw it. Mm -hmm. So Jay, we've come out in the field. Tell us a little bit about what we see on both sides of us. Yep. Well, this is the French lavender. And okay. uh, this is, uh, both of these varieties, there's two different varieties here, are used for um, both culinary purposes and drying and then also oil production. Now when you say culinary, what do you mean when you say culinary? Yeah, well culinary uh, for cooking. Okay. Uh, lavender is so, an herb okay. and so it's got a wide variety of, of cooking uses okay. um, dependent on, on what people are looking for. But okay. um, some of this will be dried and um, then you can mix it with like lavender lemonade, which is okay. really good, especially this time of year. Well, we're going to have to try that. Lavender iced tea, <laughs> okay. and, uh, which is also really good. Um, and then this stuff here is called uh, super. Uh, this is a hybrid plant and this is a, a big oil producer for us. Okay. And so um, this we distill down, we'll cut it. Okay. Um, one of the challenges with lavender is there's no mechanized equipment to harvest all this. Uh, and so it's all done by hand. And uh, we use a, a Japanese uh, rice cutting knife, which is kind like a, a little like knife. a corn knife. That. And, um, but it's all done by hand. And uh, what wow. we'll do is we'll bundle it. As we're cutting it, we're bundling it. And then we'll take it back to the barn that's in the background. And, so it's uh, all pretty much gotta be cut at one time. When it's ready, it's gotta be cut. Yeah, what we do is um, some is bunched and then dried, and then okay. others we put into the still. And okay. uh, that's what we distill down for the oil. Okay, all right. And you showed me earlier, you just pull off a hand. Yeah, Handful. just uh, just pull some of that off and, and rub grind it in, it in your, your hands. Yeah, it's uh, one of the greatest aromas ever created. Ah, smells good. It smells like something I need to put in my drawer to make my clothes smell good. Yeah, well, a lot of people do that. 
Huh. People buy sachets and that sort of thing. Yeah. The lavender is one of those things that um, there's biblical references to the lavender. It's okay. been around for thousands of years and uh, has been used for a okay. wide variety of purposes. Okay. Tell us there's another crop out here and I get excited when I come to the field and I see all of these bees. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the bees. You were telling me earlier about different bees like the different varieties. Yeah. And yeah, we have 12 beehives here on the property and uh, we harvest the honey. Uh, we've got a pretty unique system set up so that um, the bees are harvesting uh, nectar from other crops early in the spring. Uh, we then take that off, put the frames back into the hive, and then um, right about the time that they're starting to lift the, the nectar off the lavender. And okay. then we'll get lavender honey. Okay. And uh, lavender honey is, uh, is extraordinary. Okay. And because there's no other lavender farms around here, it's, y it's really difficult to find. Now you said um, bumblebees like more of this this variety yeah, you'll see more bumblebees? Yeah you'll see more bumblebees on the Provence mm -hmm. and uh, we're not quite sure why but then you'll see a lot more uh, honeybees on the super mm -hmm. and the only thing that we can attribute that to is that the honeybees must like this nectar a little better. The bees will work this for the next couple weeks while everything's starting to bloom out mm -hmm. and uh, and it's amazing if you come out here Usually early in the morning, the whole field is just buzzing ah. with honeybees and they're just working away, gathering up all the nectar yeah. that they can. And I think that's one thing people forget. They, they forget the importance of bees, you know, in, in anything that we do. You know, you know without they, bees, uh, everybody goes hungry that's because right. uh, bees pollinate all the fruits and vegetable crops that are out there. Right. And uh, without them, we're all in big trouble. We try and promote uh, bees here wherever we can. If, uh, if we see a bee swarm, we'll capture them and uh, start a new hive that way. Right. We also have mason bees and orchard bees that we grow here. And so um, bees are, are really important to us, uh, they are. both here on the farm and just around the whole area. That's true. So Jay, tell us a little bit, I see you've been working this morning. So tell yeah. us a little bit about, about what you've done this morning. Yeah, well, as I mentioned, there's no mechanized equipment to harvest lavender. And so it's all done by hand. But what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll harvest these bunches just like this. Okay. And then we'll bind them up, uh, usually rubber with just a rubber them. band. Okay. And then uh, we've got a barn at the other end of, of the property. And so Beautiful. these will go down there and they'll hang upside down for about a month. And then once they're um, dried out, then we roll them and then all the buds come off, and then okay. we use the dried buds for uh, all different kinds of things. Now, will you actually take these bunches and sell them at the farmer's market? Yeah, we'll still? sometimes take these bunches right to the market. And then people will just dry them themselves? Yeah. Or, okay. And oftentimes what we'll do is, uh, like on the morning of a farmer's market, we'll come out here and we'll harvest them so they're good and fresh, okay. and then we'll take them right to market and then okay. uh, sell, them, sell them that way. Wow, that's great. But as you can tell, they're really aromatic when, oh, you, they when are. you first harvest them. So this is what the kids, they'll yeah, put so in the wagon. Yeah, so Aiden will load this up in his John Deere and drive it around. It's hysterical to watch. Up here, what we do is we take the lavender and uh, we'll hang it. And by the time we're done, this whole uh, loft will be filled with lavender and uh, it dries for about a month. And then once it's dried, we take it out and we roll it and um, get the buds after they're dried. So Jay, tell us a little bit about the tool you have there. Yeah, this is a, it's a Japanese rice cutter, and uh, this is what we use to harvest the lavender. Um, it's like a little corn knife, but it's very, very sharp. It's serrated. And uh, basically what we do is you saw those bunches that we right, loaded up so a minute ago. We'll get a big bunch, and then we just cut it right off the top of the plant. Okay. But this is the primary tool that we use when, uh, when we're harvesting. Do you have more than one of those? Or yes, we one? do. We have okay. a few of these, yeah. Now, where do you buy something like that? Is that... Uh, we found this on a, in a garden catalog, okay. and uh, we just tried it out and found and out that worked. this was the best thing that worked. Okay. We were looking earlier at some older plantings, at what you said were about seven, some were seven years old. Right. And lavender is actually a perennial. It is. So tell us about what we see here. We've got some newer plantings yes. here. Yes. Uh, what we did is the older plants over there um, are what we started with, and each year we're, we do a couple rows and just keep moving this way. These are uh, two-year-old plants here that we um, planted last year, and this actually is a pink lavender, oh. um, which is not all that common, but we've harvested okay. some of that. Okay. And then these plants here are new plants, and we just put these in um, okay. this year. And um, new lavender plants are either propagated or bought as plugs, and then, um, and then we just put them in here. And as you can see, they're spaced about four feet apart. And, uh, and then our rows are spaced about 10 feet apart. These were put in um, in uh, early April, and so they're now starting to flower, but mm -hmm. there's not enough flowering on here to do anything with. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll cut all these 
flower buds off okay. so that the energy goes into the plant right. um, production and mm -hmm. we won't really do anything with these plants probably until next year. Okay. Jay, we were talking earlier about products and going to farmers markets and selling um, on the internet. What are your, I've, I've been on your website and all, you know, Facebook, I've seen a lot, you have a lot of different products, but what are your most popular products that people, your customers really like? What do they come back for? Yeah, we have about 20 different products that range from eye pillows to essential oil, but some of our largest, uh, our biggest selling products are, are the soaps that we make. Okay. Um, the soaps that we make are all natural, they don't have any parabens. Um, we also sell candles, uh, which are soy-based. Um, I saw that. Non-petroleum mm -hmm. uh, candles. Um, those are big sellers. And then some of the lotions that we make, uh, which are also okay. all natural. So that's what really brings people back. Yeah, those are the ones. And those and, are the and things the, that... The, the, and the bunches, does that really bring, bring the people back to the farmer's market to buy, like, the bunches of lavender? Yeah, I, that's such a, a short window. Yeah. Um, and so when we have them, they mm -hmm. usually sell out pretty quick. Yeah. And then also the honey. We, uh, we harvest okay. the honey. And then um, lavender honey is always a, a big and, and a very quick seller. So how much honey can you produce in an average year if, you know, I know there's good and bad years? Yeah, different years. Um, <clears throat> we estimate that uh, each year we can probably, out of the 12 hives, we'll get about 100 pounds. Wow. And sometimes a little more than that. But, That's great. Um, Depends right. really on the on the on the nectar flow yeah. and how good it yeah. is. I like your rotation because you talked earlier about you plant clover and then you'll use that honey and then by, you'll harvest that honey and then the lavender will come and then you'll do the lavender and then you've got sunflowers. So I, I think that's great that whole rotation you're you know really working that into. Your... Yeah, the rotation is an important part of what we do. I mean, yeah. each one is dependent on another. We plant the clover also as a nitrogen fixer for the soil, right. and, um, and so that we don't have to use a synthetic. Uh, right manufactured. So you're not buying any commercial fertilizer. You're making your own nitrogen, which is great. We're I commend you on that. We're making our own here. Um, it's tilled right into the ground and then mm -hmm. we put the lavender right on top of that. That helps it in its initial first right. year growth to give it a boost and then after that we leave it alone. But wow. it serves dual purposes in that it feeds the bees in the early part of the spring mm -hmm. um, with, and we use uh, crimson clover which is a high nectar producer. Right. And then um, going into the winter months, we plant some sunflowers, and then that gives the bees their, uh, their final nectar source. We were talking earlier about bees. I love bees, and um, they don't scare me at all because I know the importance of them, you know, in our whole economy. So, I mean, do you get stung often, or how? what really happens when you're working out here? It's really very rare. Um, what happens is the bees right now are so preoccupied with gathering nectar that um, they're really not in a defensive mode. They're more uh, out foraging. Mm -hmm. And so the only time you'll really get stung is, is mostly by accident. If you've got one pinned uh, in between the buds and, okay. and you're holding it, mm -hmm. um, maybe then, but most times they're, they're pretty yeah. docile mm -hmm. and uh, won't bother you. Yeah, I noticed when we picked up um, some of the bunches, the bees were still in them. So that's, oh yeah, yeah that's and it happens neat. regular. I mean, you could almost grab one of these yeah. With your hand and they won't hurt you okay so you want to give us a little demonstration on how you would um, actually cut a bunch this is the tool that we use and as i mentioned it's a japanese uh, rice cutting knife it's serrated it's very sharp but we'll get a big bunch like this and um and this probably isn't as big as we would get it and then okay. we just cut it and okay. that's what we end up with and then you know, there might be occasions where we have to pull out a piece of grass or something mm -hmm. like that. Then but then that's bound, um, and then we'll hang that in the barn uh, pretty much just like that. And then uh, in about a month, it'll be dried. Or we can just take that and we'll sell that as a, a bunch that's at one of the markets. Now, is there a rule of thumb on how big the bunches are should or shouldn't be because of drying? Is there some mechanism that you actually measure, or is it just whatever you can get in your hand? Yeah, it's uh, mostly what we can get in our hand. Generally, we're getting much bigger bunches than this. Like, we'll, right. we might add two or three smaller bunches together, together. to make one giant bunch. Okay. But, um, but no, there's no, there's no yeah. steadfast okay. rule that you have to follow. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for letting us um, come out today. We certainly appreciate it. And you do have an open house. Um, you just had an open house yep. two Sundays ago. So uh, certainly people could look forward, look on Facebook, look on your internet site to see when you are going to have an um, open house. Yeah, so. we have an open house every June. Uh, this was our second one and uh, we plan on doing it again. Good. It was uh, a lot of fun. We had customers that came from all over the place. Yeah. And basically what people wanted to do is they wanted to see the lavender field in bloom. Yeah. They want to connect. People like to see what they might buy buy online or they buy at a farmer's market, they want to come back to your farm and see what you're doing. So they that's do. great that you do that. We've also had artists and photographers come out here because there okay. aren't there aren't any 
any lavender farms around here okay. and they just want to see it. So yeah. anyway, okay. that's well, for you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.